Hi everyone, Sandman here. Today's video is brought to you by a donation from Kalen, and here's what he has to say. Hey Sandman, you post new content so often, and it's always interesting, and so often current with our culture, and I really appreciate that, so keep up the great work. And I'm looking forward to more red pills in the future. Well, Kalen, thanks for your donation. And since you're not giving me a specific topic, I actually want to talk about a comment from a guy named John Doe, who posted on my channel with regards to female seduction techniques. John has a theory, and this is what he has to say. Look at the animal kingdom. In many species, the female is very plain compared to males. Why is this? Men are generally very visual, and if he likes what he sees, then her personality and behavior won't matter to him. But for the man who is honestly looking to start a family, personality and behavior are paramount. Women in the past were probably dressed in very plain appearance to discourage and protect themselves from males who only wanted to screw them over. This is also why women lose their beauty after childbirth, to discourage males from taking advantage of them while they still have offspring to take care of. Makeup and seductive clothing only screw up the system that nature's put in place. Well, John Doe, I do agree with you that women dressing themselves up in colorful clothing, as well as makeup, and doing their hair and wearing perfume, are doing it to seduce and influence men in ways that aren't found in the state of nature. And without these artificial tools for women to seduce men with, we wouldn't be as interested in sex and chasing women. Women want attention, and they want to be seduced by men, so they're constantly using these things to increase their appeal to men. But in nature, as you mentioned, it's usually the men that are supposed to look more attractive. I spoke about before how when I was in high school, girls would often come up to me and hang around in close proximity to catch my eye. We were taught that men are supposed to approach women and get rejected over and over again. But I think that in nature before the modern age, it was women that came up to men and let us know that they were interested just by their presence alone. And we would then show our interest in them by making a move on them, or basically just ignore them and give them zero attention until they got bored and looked elsewhere. And that was also the way that I found girlfriends while I was in high school. Even in my 20s, I didn't need to go to bars and parties to hit on girls. Instead, they usually came to me. All I had to do was put myself in social situations, and they would come to me and try to seduce me with their makeup, hair, and fashion. I found that women didn't necessarily get all dolled up so that men would hit on them. It was more about putting effort into their appearances so that when they saw a man that they were attracted to, they could go up to him and catch his eye. When I was 10 years old, I remember listening to some women in their 20s talk about why they put so much effort into their appearance. One of them said, I have to look my best at all times in case I meet the man in my dreams. And you never know when he's going to show up, so I have to be ready at all times. The same woman that said this eventually found her dream man, and she eventually ended up divorcing him. For women, the art of seduction begins with their appearance, and then the next step is for them to put themselves into close proximity with their male targets. And the next step after that is for the man to be seduced by her beauty, and for him to select her based on her appearance and her ability to get close to him. Most guys don't realize this while they're younger, and they often work really hard to get into close proximity with the woman that they're interested in. But the man is the catch, and if he works on himself and just waits patiently, women will often come out of the woodwork to chase him. Not chase him directly, but simply parking their rear ends next to him, and looking pretty and trying to seduce him that way. If a man works on himself, works out, makes money, then women are just going to naturally be attracted to him. That's how it seems to work in nature, and it works like that in the modern world as well. But the major difference between today and 10,000 years ago is that back then the man was attracted to a woman's genetic fitness. It was hard for her to hide her imperfections using makeup and clothing. She could only seduce him with what nature gave her. But today women use plastic surgery, Botox, and many other procedures to change their physical bodies that their genes gave them. Women that in the past had hooked noses and saggy bottoms are using medicine to enhance their appearance and get access to men that their ancestors never would have dreamed of. I remember reading many years ago about how a man in China married a woman that had so much plastic surgery done to her face that when his children were born they were incredibly ugly and the husband ended up suing the wife and divorcing her over having ugly children. Women will go to such extreme lengths to seduce men, and I even read a story about how some women in China have had so much plastic surgery done that when they use their old passports to get into other countries, they've been denied entry because they look completely different from the women on the passport. Earlier this year, I dated someone that had plastic surgery done to shrink her nose, down to a cute size. And before getting the procedure done, she looked completely different. Her choice to have it done certainly made her more attractive. And today it's extremely commonplace for women to have plastic surgery done to enhance themselves and get their foot into the door when it comes to better relationships. I agree with you, John Doe, that a woman's personality and behavior are far more important to a man wanting to get married. But women use their physical beauty to seduce men into making the wrong decisions and marrying the wrong girl. The whole mating game has been perverted because increasingly the wrong people are getting matched up. 
Men that want the mentally stable and plain-looking women are getting the gorgeous, mentally unwell ones. And all this because women are using things to enhance their beauty and lying about the person inside. I remember this summer when I went to Amish country and saw the plain-looking women with their bonnets and no makeup and long, straight dresses. There was nothing seductive about them. They all looked identically boring. They were naked in a way because all they had were their personalities and their wits to attract a man's attention. And in a way, since all these Amish women looked the same, it didn't matter which one the guy chose, because most of them would probably be the same. What I also find interesting is that many of today's women get offended if the guy they approach or hang around with doesn't get seduced by their looks. Women can't seem to handle the rejection of spending time with a guy they find attractive and have him not making a move back on them. Usually they think the guy is either gay or that there's something wrong with him. I told this story before, and I thought it was worth sharing again. I remember when I was in college, there was a girl that kept following me around and taking the same classes that I did. And she was always sitting right next to me. She was interested in me, but I only had eyes for my filmmaking and photography craft. I was more interested in doing my schoolwork and creating a bright future for myself. I didn't give her any attention and make any attempts to take advantage of her, and she was putting herself right there in front of me. She was also being rather obvious about it. And the last time she showed interest in me, she actually ended up bringing a Playboy magazine to the back of the class where I was sitting and wanted me to give her opinion about the naked images of Drew Barrymore. She was doing this because she wanted to know if I was gay and not attracted to women. Looking back at this today, it seems as though she couldn't accept the idea that a guy would basically say no to her. Here I was, a straight male that she had made herself available to, and I didn't respond. And I think that was the first time in her life that she was rejected by a man. She was 19, and I can only imagine what that did to her self-esteem. Last year, that girl, Sailor Spoon, that I was sort of dating, trying to seduce me, and I rejected her as well. And from time to time, she sends me a text message, even though she has a boyfriend, probably in the hopes of trying to monkey branch back to me. But she's completely crazy, and I think that in her case, she should just get a few pets to keep her company for the rest of her days. Women, it seems, can't handle rejection when they give it their best to seduce a man. And if you're a man going his own way that still dates women, then you need to know that it's okay to say no to crazy. You might be damaging your self-esteem, but you're protecting yourself from headaches. It's really interesting to see when female seduction fails because most women don't expect to be rejected by men in this day and age. Instead, they expect to be the ones doing all the rejecting. I don't think many women have ever dreamed that they would be the ones being told no, and I'm not interested in you, darling. I also think that every single woman in her life needs to be rejected by a man that she wants to be with. I think that lesson might teach her that men are people too, and that they could be hurt by you just as badly as you can hurt them. But I think that the typical modern Western woman has basically had to deal with very little rejection, because when she hangs out with a guy and makes herself available, and he doesn't make a move on her, she thinks there's something wrong with him and even tries to shame him. Earlier this year, I was hanging out with someone that I was incredibly attracted to, and I basically pursued her and got entangled with her. I was completely enthralled by her, but inside of me I said no because I felt it was going to be a terrible experience. The old me before going my own way would have had no issue simping and getting involved. But so much of female seduction is all about female proximity to men. If she puts herself close to you, that usually means that she wants you. But remember that as a man, you are the one with the power and the choice. If there really is a male privilege out there, then it's probably the fact that men have the right to reject women that try to seduce them. Female seduction is indirect, and most men assume that they are the ones with the power to ask women out. But in reality, we can only ask a woman out successfully if they've made themselves available to us and are in close proximity to us. If there are no women around, then we shouldn't go out and chase them. But if a woman is hovering over you like a Thanksgiving turkey, then chances are that she wants to be with you. And if you deny her that opportunity, you're basically attacking her ego and destroying your self-esteem. This is probably one of the cruelest things that you can do to a woman. And now that I fully realize this, I guess that I did it subconsciously to at least half a dozen women in my life. I guess the real reason I probably rejected them had a lot to do with me resenting the power they had over me as a man. The power to seduce me. But instead of feeling helpless and giving in to them, I decided to lead them on and waste her time. I feel like I was subconsciously punishing them for being female, and I was taking back my power. I guess the lizard part of my brain knew all about female nature all along. Once again, Kaylin, I want to thank you for your donation, as well as John Doe, for this topic suggestion. If there's one thing a man needs to learn from this video, is that it's to work on yourself and put yourself in different social situations, and if you do this successfully, then you'll actually have women starting to hover over you. At that point, you're the one that can qualify them and judge them if they're good enough to be intimate with. Since humans are also part of nature, it's us men that should be on display, and women should be the ones attracted to our displays in the first place, not the other way around, with women in their makeup, colorful clothing, and other enhancements. Women have tried to steal the male mojo by repackaging it, and it's a lie, and it's time that we said no to this. 
Anyways, that's all I've got to say for today. And as always, please follow me on Twitter or like me on Facebook to get tomorrow's video today. Thanks for taking your daily dose of red pills. And remember, a red pill a day keeps the divorce lawyers away. So enjoy the rest of your day, and cheers.